Hello, YouTube people. I have not done um, one of my lesson-y type videos in a while. I have a couple of ideas, I've videos I'm trying to get around to. Uh, as you may know, I'm kind of an accidental YouTuber. Uh, I decided to, that's my new moniker is the accidental YouTuber, meaning that I don't really follow the sort of conquer the world YouTube um, uh, model. <laughs> uh, I don't really uh, have the energy or the time to, you know, make a video every Tuesday and promise this and that. And I certainly don't uh, do very well with sort of um, clickbaity kind of videos that are geared toward the greatest number of views. Uh, but when I have a good idea, I try to um, make something for you all. Um, and so here it is. Uh, I just got back from England. I had a very fun time over there. Thank you, Guitar Vivo and Guitar Breaks for putting it on. And thanks to all the people who participated in it. Um, I thought that I would expand on something that I talked about during that workshop and also that I talked about uh, with my friends Dan and Mick on that pedal show, uh, which I filmed an episode of while I was over there. And that's this idea of fluid harmony, particularly the melodic content of a chord progression. So uh, I've got my beautiful Callings I-30 here, and I thought that I would just spend a little time. So let's imagine we have this beautiful song, Autumn Leaves, in the key of E minor. So it would be A minor, D7, G major 7 of some kind, or G major to C major, then F sharp minor 7 flat 5 to B7 to E minor. Let's just take that much of it. And now, let's try and leave the same note up on top of all the chords. So we could pick any note in the key of G, but let's try doing it with a D note on top. It seems to be a good note. So we'll play A minor with a D on top, D7 with a D on top, G major with a D on top, C major 9 with a D on top, F sharp minor 7 sharp 5 with a D on top, B7 sharp 9, and E minor. That might sound like this if we did it in time. Now if we do that, at a certain point you might want to have it changed to something else, but it's a very good skill because you take chords that you may not have a D as the melody note and you learn how to uh, be flexible enough with your chord vocabulary to do this simple job. Let's say E is the top note. Oh, that sounded pretty nice. Again, it's that static uh, isn't necessarily musically pleasing, although it can be for a period of time. But to do it and to flex that muscle both in your fingers and in your brain is very handy. Now you could take any of the other notes. I'll do one more. Let's do F sharp. That's a little funny. And now it's nice. Here's a funny one. And then this. Now, you might have noticed in the last three examples, leaving the same note on top has its charms for a while, and then our ear starts begging for something a little different. Um, and so that, that's when, it, when you're trying this type of exercise, then when your ear is begging for something, then you might want to give it something that it's begging for, which is some movement. Now, here's another idea. Let's say we are going to move the top note, so every chord's got a new top note, a different note on top. And we're going to stay in the key at first. Let's start in that same D note. G 
G with F sharp, C with G, F sharp minor 7 with A, and then here we're, we run into a little problem. The next note is fine, but let's say we get to there and we come back down. So then we played a little game with that top note. Try now starting high and coming down. natural in there on that B7 just because I wanted some color on that uh, note. Um, let's start on a C note and bring it up. On the D there's a D, on the G there's an E. Now we have an F sharp on C. This is interesting. F sharp minor 7 flat 5 with a C, uh, sorry, with a G in the melody. Let's try two notes per chord. That's pretty nice. We make a lot of progress up the fingerboard if we do two notes per chord. I'll run through that one more time again. now enter into a uh, little chromatic territory. Now let's go one note per chord, but we're going to go up a chromatic scale as much as we can. Starting on D again, just to keep it simple. Really try as many different starting notes as you can, and just experiment with this. But here we'll start on D again on the top of, of an A minor 7th chord. A minor 11 is what it's called. Then the next chord, because we're moving chromatically, will be D7 flat 9. And then we'll have G major 6. And then we'll have a funny chord, uh, C major 7 with an F on top. At that moment, I might skip the F and go straight to the uh, F sharp. And then here we go, F sharp minor 7 with a G on top. And then 13, not so satisfying. That might be better. or. That might be the most pleasing. Okay, so let's try that one. Skip one. Stay there and come back down. Okay, so there's no hard and fast rules here. What we're trying to do is explore some pleasing musical sounds and make sure that these chords are flexible to our fingers and our ears so they're not just over and over and over again okay let's come down chromatically let's start on an e note three four two three four i'm going to make this dominant to make this one dominant and then there so I couldn't use a major seventh on top of that B I just moved it to an, uh, an A note which is the flat seven try that one again that time I don't know what I did different but it sounded nice to me let's try uh, doing two notes per chord but using chromaticism a little funny a little 
clunky, but it, it was a good exercise. It was a good thing to try. The idea here is, is that when we accompany somebody, we want to have some flexibility. We don't want to just be doing routines that we've worked out or memorized passages. We have to be able to uh, support, be empathetic, push, pull, respond, echo, stay out of the way. All these things that were, are required of us when we're comping are really requiring us to be ultimately flexible and improvisational. So the more of this kind of exercising that we can do, uh, the more flexible we'll become in the realm of this thing I call fluid harmony. Okay, so here's a little something. I'll just comp for an imaginary soloist on autumn leaves, just so you can hear this whole business in action. So one, two, a one, You might have noticed I only did the first eight bars, so uh, if you want to uh, try this on your own, go ahead and do the, the whole tune, including the second half, etc., but use some of these same strategies. All right, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, please subscribe if you have not. Uh, please leave a comment letting me know what kind of content you're interested in, uh, and check the links in the description for all my various offerings. All right, take care, guys.